Hello everyone and welcome to game number 13 from the 1960 World Chess Championship match between Mikhail Tal and Mikhail Botvinnik. Uh, as you know Tal is uh, currently leading by 2 points and uh, this is game 13. Uh, you've probably seen uh, the, my, uh, my previous 12 uh, videos, some of the previous 12 games. Uh, if uh, you haven't, uh, feel free to check out in the description below. There is a link to the playlist uh, featuring all of the 12 games. Uh, and if you're new to this channel, if you're new to the Mikhail Tal vs. Mikhail Botvinnik match, uh, I also suggest you check out my coverage of the 1959 Candidates Tournament. Uh, the link to that will be also in the description below. So that being said, uh, let's, uh, let's dive into game number 13. Uh, here, uh, as you remember, Tal had uh, Tal had a lot of success when he uh, switched from his usual e4 uh, in, in game number 11 as he won that game, so he decided to go c4 this game. So, c4 and Botany goes for c5. Uh, another thing uh, Tal said uh, to his coach Alexander Koblenz before this game, uh, he said that uh, he was really tired. This is already game number 13 and he could really use a rest day. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's not its not like you can just take a rest day. And he thought that if he's such a young fellow, is tired, then definitely Botvinnik should be tired as well. Uh, so, uh, Koblenz told him to, to maybe go for, for a nice slow line, you know, don't do anything crazy. Uh, just, uh, just try and uh, play a quick game today and we'll continue w with the game number 14. Uh, so here, uh, knight to f3 was played. Uh, in those days, there was the usual line knight to c3, uh, followed by knight to f6, g3, d5, c captures, knight captures, and bishop to g2. Uh, knight to c7, uh, d3, and e5. And uh, this was something Tal enjoyed playing with the white pieces, but the problem was Botvinnik uh, scored uh, a couple of uh, brilliant victories so, uh, in this line with the black pieces, so uh, as Tal was tired, he didn't really want to challenge Botvinnik to this. Uh, so instead of knight c3, he went knight to f3, and after knight to f6, now g3. Uh, now if Botvinnik tries to go for this d5 idea, then after c captures, knight captures, bishop to g2, and knight to c6, uh, Tal had the idea of going into uh, this uh, uh, variation of the Catalan with d4, and uh, this was uh, this was a nice line, uh, very easily uh, played for white. Uh, so after this g3 move, uh, Botvinnik plays b6. Uh, bishop to g2, now bishop to b7, and here castles. And here g6. Uh, g6, uh, Tal believes, is the most precise move to go uh, in this variation of the English. Uh, if he goes e6, he gives this uh, as uh, he gives this uh, a huge variation after d4, c captures on d4, and queen captures on d4, knight to c6 attacking the queen, queen to f4, uh, bishop to e7, knight to c3, now castles, rook to d1, uh, queen to b8, now queen captures, rook captures, and after bishop to f4 attacking the rook, uh, rook to c8, knight to e5, uh, and after d6, knight captures, bishop captures, uh, bishop captures on d6, bishop captures, rook captures, bishop captures, king captures, uh, and after rook captures on c4 and rook 8 to d1. Uh, that it's a nice position to play uh, for for white, so uh, although it can be drawn, of course, it's not like white is winning here, but uh, uh, you know, practice has shown that uh, white white did win a lot of games uh, using this variation and this position. Uh, so no wonder Botvinnik uh, goes for g6 here. Uh, we have a d4 now by Tal, c captures on d4, queen captures on d4, uh, and queen captures on d4 is a mistake. And uh, this is what uh, why queen to d4 is a mistake. Uh, knight to d4 is much better here. Tal's idea is uh, to go queen to h6 and then go bishop to h6. Queen to h4 and bishop to h6 uh, and uh, create uh, some chances on the king side. Uh, but here Botvinnik simply plays bishop to g7, knight to c3 and now knight to c6 attacking the queen. Uh, if Botvinnik went uh, kingside castle here then queen to h4 would definitely be nice for white. Bishop to h6 is coming next. Uh, but Botvinnik played knight to c6 and now uh, queen to h4 isn't uh, really a good idea, uh, but Tal, as, as as he says himself, Tal was tired and uh, he played it. Uh, so queen to h4, uh, but now Botvinnik shows that queen to h4 isn't really doing anything, he simply plays h6. And now not only uh, is bishop to h6 never a threat, uh, he's already threatening g5. For example, if you play a slow move, then g5 is coming, and you don't have a square for your queen. All of these squares are taken. If you go h3, then g4 is coming, uh, you lose a piece here. 
So after h6, uh, Tal tried knight to d5, uh, and here uh, Botvinnik played e6. And Tal says uh, Botvinnik played e6 because Botvinnik was tired. e6 isn't really a good move. Uh, Tal says that uh, knight to a5 is a better move, and he talks about this in his book, saying that it will be very hard for white to keep his uh, pawn here. Uh, you know, you can't really go b3, you're gonna open up uh, an attack from the bishop to the rook on a1. Uh, so this could be very dangerous, uh, but uh, unfortunately for Tal, uh, e6 is the engine's favorite move. So Botvinnik, even though he may have been tired, uh, definitely plays the engine's favorite move. So uh, not, not, something, uh, <laughs> not something well written by Tal uh, in this instance. Maybe, maybe he was uh, very tired when he was writing this part of the book as well. Uh, so knight captures on f6, bishop, uh, queen captures, queen captures, and bishop captures. So a forced exchange of, of, of pieces and queens, and now rook to b1. And here, uh, rook to b1 uh, seems like a very dangerous move, because it allows, uh, it allows black, uh, for example, knight to a5, and then uh, bishop to e4, which will attack the rook, the rook will have to move, uh, and then the b-pawn will be uh, un under a lot of attack. Uh, but... Uh, Botvinnik had all of this figured out, uh, and Tal as well. Uh, here, knight to a5 was played with the idea of bishop to e4. Uh, b3 by Tal, we have bishop to e4 attacking the rook, uh, and here was Tal's idea, the only move that actually is playable in this position for white. Uh, here, Tal played bishop to b2. And bishop to b2, uh, now you can't afford to capture the rook. Uh, if you play bishop captures, then you get bishop captures, and now your rook is attacked if you move the rook. Uh, then you lose another piece here, and uh, here you would have to grab a pawn, and after bishop captures, grab another pawn, uh, and after defending uh, the pawn, rook to c8, and then after bishop to c3, uh, bishop captures on c4, uh, and here you would have a position where uh, black is actually up three pawns, uh, this a, uh, a, b, and d pawn, uh, but uh, white's extra piece uh, is, is simply too much here. So a black, uh, even with uh, three pawns, a black would not have enough compensation for the piece. So this would not be playable for black. Uh, so bishop capture some b2 was played. Uh, but uh, also one thing you have to notice that uh, here, when knight to a5 was played, uh, knight to b4 was no better uh, for Botvinnik, uh, because now uh, white can simply play this bishop to d2 move, uh, and you don't have a tempo on this pawn. If you capture it, then rook to a1, and your knight is trapped. So after this, uh, knight to b4 instead of knight to a5, if, if Botvinnik played this, uh, then bishop to d2 would simply force the knight back and, uh, you know, just lose a move. Uh, but okay, uh, after this knight to a5 move, we have b3, uh, bishop to uh, e4, as we said, bishop to b2, bishop captures, rook captures, and uh, in this position, white is a little bit better, but uh, it was, again, in this position that the players agreed to a draw. Uh, you know, Tal, Tal had a had a fine position with the white pieces, uh, considered a slightly a better position, uh, but he was actually very happy to draw this game. So yeah, uh, and uh, that's uh, why I use this uh, quote above the board as uh, the curtains, uh, the curtain of the Pushkin Theater uh, had been up for 50 minutes, uh, but then it was lowered. Uh, it must be assumed to the great dismay of the spectators. So, uh, as Tal says, uh, the usual struggle between uh, him and Botvinnik lasted for about five hours, uh, but uh, on this day, on the 13th game, uh, it only lasted for 50 minutes. So, uh, the spectators, of course, were not very impressed in 1960, and some 60 years later, after that game, uh, you will not be very impressed by this game, watching it on YouTube, but as I am making a series, uh, I felt it was necessary to cover all the games. So, uh, that's the game. I do hope uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, and I would just like to uh, take this opportunity to, to thank uh, Sean Wilcoxon for sending me this photo. Uh, it's actually a photo uh, of his cat, Hannah, uh, watching my video. Here you have Fisher versus Petrosian. Uh, he said that uh, he was watching my video and then he just uh, went to grab a, a glass of water and when he came back, uh, he found Hannah watching my video. So make, it makes me very happy. Not only do I have uh, human viewers, but uh, it seems I also have feline viewers. So very nice. Uh, thank you, Sean Wilcoxon. And uh, yeah, uh, that's it. I will see you soon with game number 14. Uh, thank you all for watching and uh, uh, have, have a great uh, rest of the day.